Hello everyone and welcome to Body Bags. I'm your reviewer for today. I'm Cinema 77 Horror and Cult Film Lover and this week we're doing a theme on the show and uh, the theme is nostalgia movies. Now basically the idea is you know we pick and choose and review a movie that uh, you know holds a very special place in our hearts and something that we you know really love and remember and have fond memories and kind of help you know shape us into uh sorry help shape us into becoming you know horror fans and things like that and um it was kind of a tough call i had a number of ones that i really wanted to to include but uh the one i'm going to go the one i'm going to go with today is the 1978 george romero zombie classic dawn of the dead um yeah this movie is just it's very very special to me holds a very special place in my heart I'll get to that, but um, first, you know, um, it's kind of hard to review this movie because, I mean, you know, we're all horror fans here. We all know this movie. Um, you know, we all know what it's about. You know, we have, you know, four main characters. We have, you know, Steve and Fran who work for the Pittsburgh News Station. And um, we have Roger and, and Peter who are, you know, SWAT team guys. And um, basically they, you know, steal a, you know, um, like a weather chopper and stuff, and, you know, and the idea was they were going to, you know, kind of like fly their way to Canada and, you know, on the way there, they were going to look for, uh, um, supplies and fuel and things like that. And then they come across, you know, this big mall that, uh, you know, you know, it's been abandoned by people, but it's got a lot of zombies in it and stuff like that. And, uh, so, you know, they stop there at first, the idea is they're going to stop there and just, you know, get supplies, get what they need, and then move on to the next place. But, um, you know, Peter and Roger, after going and checking the mall out and stuff, and they realize, you know, hey, maybe we would, we shouldn't be in such a hurry to leave. You know, we got a good thing going on here. And, you know, instead of, you know, going out or scavenging, trying to, you know, look for supplies and stuff, you know, we got a lot of what we need here and everything else. You know, there's, there's all, all the food we could ever want. There's all the stuff we could ever want. And, um, you know, and Steven gets in on it and Fran is kind of like the only character who kind of realizes like, you know, this isn't going to, it's not going to pan out, you know? It's all like, yeah, it sounds like, it seems like fun at first, but you know, over time it's just, it's going to feel like a big prison. So, you know, and then they decide kind of, she's kind of outvoted, but a little bit, she kind of goes along with it. And, um, you know, they decide that what they're going to do is they're going to live in the small, they're going to block off the entrances and exits and, you know, and, uh, <clears throat> kill whatever zombies are in there. And then basically they're going to, you know, take over the mall and, and it's going to be their home pretty much. And so we see their struggles with dealing with that and, um, you know, doing, you know, having to, you know, go on their adventures and things like that. And, um, you know, of course, then we got, you know, George Romero, you know, the late George Romero social commentary about how, you know, like having all this stuff at first, it sounds like it's great and it's wonderful and everything else. But then you realize like at the end of the day, it's not really, it's not really all it's cracked up to be. So, but, um, yeah, this movie, um, I think it's a, I think it's a real masterpiece of a movie. I think that George Romero just made a, he made a great film. I mean, he made a movie that was, you know, there are parts in this movie that are really scary and suspenseful. The special effects now, okay, you know, we all know over the years that Tom Savini is kind of, <clears throat> kind of gone on record to say he wasn't really happy with the way some of the effects in the movie were handled. He wasn't really happy with the way the, you know, the zombies ended up looking. They kind of all end up kind of having this like bluish gray look about it. He wasn't happy with that. And and he really hated the fake blood that they used on the set. You know, he always, you know, we all know he always referred, said it looked like, you know, melted red crayons and stuff like that. I wasn't happy with it. But, you know, aside from that, though, I mean, you know, when this movie came out, you know, some of the effects were still groundbreaking. I mean, you know, the when Leonard Lees gets the machete to the head, um, you know, the zombie who gets, you know, his, heli his head taken off by the helicopter blades and everything else, you know, so, I mean, even though, okay, some of the, okay, so maybe, you know, a couple of effects didn't hold up over time, but, you know, a lot of them still have, and they're still fantastic. Um, yeah, even at the beginning of the movie, when Roger and Peter and the other characters are clearing out the tenement, and 
Um, you know, the, the one lady runs to the zombie and he bites her in the arm, bites her in the neck and all that stuff. And, you know, it's, it's still, it holds up, you know, and, um, you know, and then Romero did have an interesting story with interesting characters to tell. And, um, you know, I just, I can't really find anything at fault with this movie. I really can't. Um, just the movie's well made It's you know, the writing is very intelligent, very sharp, um, very fun. The characters are, you know, very interesting. Um, you kind of have this dynamic going around with all the different characters. You have Peter who, you know, he's basically kind of like a real level headed guy. He's, you know, thinking he's, you know, kind of like, you know, if, you, if you're going to have a man in charge, Peter's the guy you want. <clears throat> you have, you know, Roger who starts off as, you know, kind of very sharp guy, but you know, as time goes on throughout the movie, he starts to lose it. And, you know, he's not really, he's not dealing with the whole situation very well. And, and unfortunately proves to be his downfall. And then we got, um, Steven, you know, who, uh, you know, he starts off as kind of really clumsy and awkward and can't really do what the other guys do. And then, you know, he starts to get better at it and everything else. But overall, you know, it's just the, uh, the greed and everything, you know, with being in the mall and having all the stuff there, you know, it just kind of overtakes him. And, and he seems like he can't deal with the idea of not having it. And, and, um, you know, and then Fran, you know, Fran is, even though, you know, some people would say, well, Fran's kind of the buzz kill, but at the same time, well, Fran's kind of more the voice of reason. And, and she's the one who's telling these guys, you know, like, it sounds like it's going to be a great thing now. And it sounds like it's going to be wonderful. But before you know it, it's going to be hollow and it's not, it's not going to be as fun as you think it is. And it turns out she's right, you know, so, but, um, you know, but George Romero, you know, had that really sharp commentary, social commentary on this, that, you know, the seventies was the time of, you know, everybody, you know, like he always said, dancing to the Bee Gees and everybody getting all this stuff. But then you realize, well, not only is having all this stuff, not really what you want and it doesn't really fulfill your life, but then everybody else wants it too. And so you got to deal with that, which, you know, happens in this movie. They get the mall, they close it off. They kill all the zombies and, so, and it's theirs. And then, you know, they start becoming bored with it and, you know, and they start, you know, realizing like having all this stuff really is as great as we thought it was going to be. You know, we thought it'd be great to have all the guns you could ever want, all the ammo you could ever want all the toys you could ever want to play with, all the clothes you could ever want to wear, you know, have all the food you could ever possibly want to eat and everything else. It all starts out sounding so great, but after a while, it just kind of feels like something's missing. But then, you know, like Romero, you know, like this is like, not only uh, do they end up not being happy with it, but then other people come along and they want it too. And then you have the motorcycle gang with, um, you know, Tasso Stavakris, St Stavakris, uh, Stavarkis as uh, one of the, um, you know, one of the guys and uh, Tom Savini is one of the biker guys and everything else. And, um, you know, they come in and they start, you know, you know, there's this big gigantic epic battle in the mall between the, uh, you know, between the zombies, between the SWAT team guys, between the bikers and everything else. And, um, so yeah, I mean, it's just, this movie's got everything in it and, uh, you know, so, um, I know people probably might be asking, you know, like, why don't you have the four disc? It's like, actually I do just, unfortunately I was in a period of time. See, I've got the four discs set in here from Anchor Bay. Yeah, I have that. There's the European, the extended documentaries, theatrical edition. So I have all of it in here, but just, um. Yeah, just the, uh, <laughs> unfortunately, my packaging got destroyed and everything else. And so I had to turn around, just get the regular single disc here and just put all four discs inside this. So, so that's why I only got this one. But um, anyway, so, yeah, I think Ramiro made a brilliant movie. Um, I think, you know, his use of music, the combination of both the Goblin score that was composed by, you know, the Goblin with Claudio Simonetti and Dario Gento. Um, mixed with the fantastic library music that he, you know, found. And, you know, the music is great. The atmosphere is great. Um, this movie is just, you know, it's a thrill ride. You know I mean? It, it's like if this is basically like if Star Wars or Indiana Jones was really a horror movie, it'd be something like Dawn of the Dead. It's 
you know, it's a thrill ride movie. It's action packed. It's fun. It's got a lot of adventure in it and everything else. And, um, and the thing was, is like, you know, okay, going into the nostalgic part of it, when I was a little kid, when I really shouldn't have been watching this, um, this movie really, <clears throat> if you, if you watch this, even as a kid, this movie with like what video games and stuff have in it today, this movie plays very, very well to a child. And I was, I was a little kid who shouldn't have been seeing this when I was, when I first watched it. But, um, it just, it had everything in it I could possibly want. There was action and, and adventure. There was zombies and cool stuff going on. And, and, you know, all this, you know, it was just, um, and just, this was a movie that just, I mean, you know, don't get me wrong. I love all six movies in the, in the, uh, Ramiro zombie saga. You know I mean? I know a lot of people hated survival of the dead, diary of the dead, land of the dead, but I love all six of them. I really do. I could see why some people have faults with them, but no, I loved all six Ramiro zombie movies, but this one is definitely my favorite. This one goes pretty much on record as being my all time favorite zombie movie. Just, I remember watching this movie over and over again as a kid. I had so much fun with it. It just, it was so entertaining. Um, just it had it all, you know, it just, you know, like I said, you had the, the war going on in the mall between the zombies and the SWAT guys and the, you know, and the, uh, the bikers and, you know, and the fact that they, this was all happening in a real mall and it wasn't fake and it wasn't, you know, I mean, it's like, you know, when they did the remake, hell, they couldn't even do a lot of that stuff again. And they did this, I believe the budget was something like $20 million, you know, but $1978, that may as well have been like, you know, like 200 million or something like that. But, uh, yeah, but, uh, I mean, just, um, you know, this movie is just, uh, I mean, I love Night of the Living Dead, but this was so dramatically different from Night of the Living Dead and, and, um, you know, it's like, while I'm not really on the bandwagon of, uh, you know, thinking that Romero wrote terrible female characters of Night of the Living Dead, you know, I do appreciate that Franny does kind of seem to start off as a potential damsel in distress, but then she becomes stronger. And then, you know, she decides she's not going to take shit. She's going to stand up and she's going to kick ass. She's not going to sit here and let herself be a victim, you know? And she tells Steven, I want to learn how to fly the helicopter. I want to learn how to fly the, you know, I want to learn how to shoot. I want to learn how to do this. I want to learn how to do that. So it's like, that was another thing too. That was, you know, really cool was to see the, you know, the evolution of female heroes in movies, particularly horror films. And, you know, the women not always sitting there waiting to be saved by the big strong man or anything like that. And, and the women being smart and being the voice of reason and so on and so forth. And just, you know, um, just this movie ended up, it has so much replay value for me. And, and, you know, I just, I do, I watch it. I, you know, I could watch it right now. You know, it's just, it's that good. And, and, um, unfortunately, yeah, I just want real quick. I wanted to mention, um, say sincere, very heartfelt rest in peace to, um, Joe Pilato, who we all know as Captain Rhodes from day of the dead, but also had a, he had a little bit of a cameo part in this movie as well playing a different character, but, um, but yeah, just, um, I mean, Dawn of the Dead, it just really opened my eyes to, you know, I mean, you're sitting here thinking about horror movies are scary and that they're disturbing and that they bother you and stuff like that. This was really like the first time I could see that horror movies could really be fun and be really entertaining and be intellectual at the same time. And just, you know, just, it knocked me off my ass, you know, I just, I thought it was so great. And, I just can't say good enough things about this movie. I love it to death. And uh, so, yeah, Dawn of the Dead is very, very much a very influential movie on me. It's a very nostalgic movie for me. Um, you know, uh, you know, like if I had to compare it to the remake, the remake is okay. Um, I would much rather watch this. The biggest difference between the remake is more of a very, very downbeat, very kind of bleak and just kind of downbeat movie where this is, you know, this is more like, like I said, this is more kind of action adventure and, and, you know, blood and gore and, and fun and humor and all kinds of great stuff going on. So it's like Dawn of the Dead is just so much fun to watch. It just really is. It's a truly great movie. So, but anyway, that's going to do it. So yeah, my nostalgic movie for, uh, this week on the theme is, uh, Dawn of the Dead. 
you know, George Romero, rest in peace, 1978. So that's going to do it. And um, I want to thank anybody who took the time to watch this video. I appreciate you for doing it. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you did like the video, please like and subscribe. Subscribe to Body Bags. And, um, you know, we got great guys. They're all doing great videos. Um, there's a different reviewer for every day of the week. I'm, you know, the uh, Saturday reviewer. And um, so, yeah, you know, just um, hope you guys enjoy the rest of the theme week. And uh, I'll see you all later. And thank you very much for watching. Take care. Have a good night. Bye-bye.